All right, so this is the last uh, lecture of the semester. We're discussing the anatomy and physiology of mammals, um, more specifically the anatomy of a pig, um, but the same general trends apply to most other mammals and some other, uh, other classes of organisms too. So I highly recommend you watch the video uh, in the link below. Um, it's produced by Carolina Biological uh, and they go step by step through uh, the pig dissection and they do a very good job describing structures uh, and the purpose of structures. So as a reminder, um, we're discussing uh, organisms in the class Mammalia. We have those three groups such as the monotremes, the marsupials, and the eutherians. So the monotremes being found in Australia and Papua New Guinea, such as the platypus and the echidna. You have marsupials, such as the kangaroos uh, and the wallabies, um, and possums that have uh, some sort of pouch uh, where that uh, their offspring will crawl into before feeding. And then you have the largest group, uh, eutherians, which are the placental uh, organisms. So all mammals have these characteristics. They all have mammary glands, which produce milk. Uh, for their young. Um, we have dead epidermis, uh, such as hair, that is used for insulation. Um, so uh, that hair traps warm air close to the body. Um, it provides a very dense coat. We have a four-chambered heart. We have two atria and two ventra. And then we have internal fertilization and then internal development. So, just a reminder of the taxonomy, phylum chordata, uh, we're in the subphylum vertebrata. The superclass is Nathostomata, these are the jawed organisms. And then we're in the class Mammalia. So this is what I'll be going over today. We'll go over external anatomy, uh, the mouth. Uh, we have thoracic cavity, abdominal cavity, uh, both arteries and veins, and then the excretory and reproductive systems. So you may recognize these slides if you've looked over the mammal um, or the final study guide uh, for dissections I posted on Blackboard quite a while ago. Uh, I'll go through each of these structures, um, pointing them out, uh, giving a little discussion for them, and so on. So there are 60 structures um, in total. So for external anatomy, uh, most of the stuff should be fairly obvious. You have a head right here where you have the uh, eyes, mouth, uh, nares, which are the nostrils. Um, you also can have hair on the chin. You can very barely see it in this picture, but you can have hair here and here. <clears throat> Obviously, there's legs. <clears throat> uh, there's a tail right here. Uh, in uh, fetal pigs, you'll have an umbilical cord. Um, which will be coming off uh, the ventral side or where the stomach is. You have an anus and then a genital papillae. And so you can use the genital papillae to determine the sex of your pig. So if you have, uh, if you're looking at a male uh, fetal pig, that genital papillae will be just posterior uh, to the umbilical cord, posterior meaning behind. If you have uh, a female uh, pig, you'll have uh, that genital papillae just ventral to the anus. All right, so starting off at number one, we have uh, our tail right here, just posterior to uh, the body. You have the anus right here, located here. For number two, you have the umbilical cord tied shut right here. It's that protrusion right there. Kind of obvious are the legs. So you have four total, you have a tetrapod, uh, this fifth uh, arrow points to these ears. They're called pinna, uh, P-I-N-N-A. Um, right here you have the eye uh, closed, um, but there's two, one on either side. Number four here points to the tongue. You also have nares, which you can see here. You have one nair here and one nair there. Um, 
basically they those are the nostrils but they're considered nares once again you have the pinna uh, or this ear structure right there uh, you have the eyes you have one on either side and then you have the umbilical cord so starting with internal anatomy one of the first cuts you make uh before dissecting into the abdominal and thoracic cavity is you uh, dissect part of the mouth. This allows you to see the esophagus, uh, the nasopharynx, and the epiglottis. So those four tubes uh, intersect right here at the back of the throat, which is what you're looking at right here. So the esophagus uh, is where food travels. So it travels from the mouth and then travels past and back. The trachea is where uh, air comes from the nares uh, and travels down towards the lungs that way. So uh, you'll have teeth. Those are fairly obvious. There will be two teeth uh, up on the dorsal side and then you'll have another set of teeth on the bottom uh, or the ventral side of the mouth. Um, more teeth will start to fill in as this uh, pig grows. You have a hard palate and a soft palate. So the hard palate is right back here, right here, on the top of the mouth, and then the soft palate's right back here. So the easiest way to tell them apart is that just remember the hard palate is just up front. That's where uh, food's generally being ground up. Soft palate's back here, um, and it's closer to the esophagus. So the nasopharynx is always. Uh, much more dorsally located. Right below that is the esophagus. That's where food travels down. So the epiglottis is located right here. It sits on top of where the larynx uh, connects to the trachea. And so this prevents food from entering into the respiratory tract. So you see here uh, in this side diagram, uh, that there's this intersection between where food and air uh, travels in these tubes. So uh, in order to prevent food from going down the wrong tube, we have the epiglottis covering up that uh, trachea and larynx. The glottis is the actual opening and the epiglottis is the, uh, the fold of tissue around it. Uh, kind of obvious is the tongue. It's always on the ventral side or the bottom side of the mouth. When we look at the mouth, uh, you can see the tooth right here, uh, fairly pronounced. You can see another one here, here, um, and there should be a row underneath this tongue. So number four is the tongue. Number 28 is the hard palate. It has these ridges. Um, and if you were actually dissecting this, you would notice that it is actually a fairly rigid structure. Number 30 is the soft, uh, the soft palate. So uh, unlike the hard palate, this is actually fairly uh, malleable. You can move it around, it's soft. Um, and then this uh, protects uh, the opening to the, esoph or the esophagus and the uh, trachea. You have the gums, which uh, surround the teeth right here, here, through here, and here. And then for number 31, you have the epiglottis. This hole right here, that is the glottis. So the glottis is the actual hole in the epiglottis. Um, as you can see in this picture, what we're looking at is uh, the cross section of the mouth. So we've cut right through here. And we're now at this point in uh, the intersection between uh, the esophagus, trachea, the nasal cavity, and the mouth. So the, the hole to the epiglottis is known as the glottis. And then that connects right up to the nasopharynx, which is this uh, portion of this respiratory tube here. So naso, you can think of nasal cavity. Then pharynx, you can think of uh, respiratory system. So just know that this one's uh, dorsal, or meaning on top. So the next step in our dissection is uh, opening up the next 
and the thorax region of our poor little pig. So in this step, uh, you can see the larynx, uh, the thymus, thyroid, trachea, esophagus, lungs, and the diaphragm. So the larynx is right here. It's this square rectangular uh, box structure attached to the esophagus, or uh, sorry, the trachea. And this is commonly asso uh, associated with uh, producing noise, um, such as in the voice box in humans. You have the thymus. You have the thymus and the thyroid right here and here. So the thymus is just this, uh, this gland that runs on either side of the larynx or the esophagus right here and here. And the thyroid generally sits right up on top of the uh, trachea. So both of these are glands. Uh, the thymus aids with the uh, immune system while the thyroid uh, aids uh, the endocrine system. Uh, we discussed the esophagus in the last couple slides. Um, the lungs aid in the respiratory system, uh, obviously. So you have oxygen and CO2 uh, diffusing in and out of the bloodstream into the lungs, where uh, the, the pig will use this diaphragm to pull uh, and expand its body cavity, which then draws uh, air into the lungs. When it exhales, this diaphragm contracts uh, and almost acts like a drum, pushing out the air. So if we look at uh, the dissection of the neck and thoracic region, here's a pi picture. So at number 26, you have the larynx, which is this box structure right in here. You have uh, the thyroid right here, pulled off to the side. This is brown. This is uh, part of the endocrine system. Uh, it's a gland. You have the thymus, uh, which I believe I removed in this picture um, just to make it easier for you all to see some of the structures. You have the carotid artery flowing up from the heart from that uh, aortic arch right there. So you, you have carotid uh, carrying blood up into uh, the brain. And then you have the jugular uh, traveling back down right here. So 21 is the carotid, 22 is the jugular. 19 is the anterior vena cava right here. This is where blood condenses um, back into the heart. Let's see what uh, we've already gone over the lungs which are on either side of the heart here right here this tube structure that runs uh, right through the neck area this is the esophagus right above it is the trachea Going back into the circulatory system, we have the subclavian vein and artery. So the subclavian artery is right here. It's number 23. And this flows out into the left uh, arm right here. And then blood flows back through uh, the subclavian vein back into that anterior vena cava right here. Another view of the same area, we have the thyroid right here at number 20. At number 25, you have the trachea right here that runs on top of uh, this esophagus. Number 26, the larynx. This is that box structure uh, that you can see in the diagrams. So when we start to look at uh, internal anatomy, uh, we'll start with the heart and the surrounding structures there. So uh, number 10 points to the lungs, number 8 points to the actual heart itself, and then number 9 points to the coronary artery. This coronary artery supplies the heart with blood. Um, the heart itself uh, is a muscle. It requires uh, oxygen to fully function. 
And so that's the function of this uh, artery is to supply the heart with blood. Right here, number 56, is the, uh, the ribs of the organism of our dissected pig. Each of these ribs has its own uh, vein and artery uh, supplying blood and nutrients uh, to each of these segments. Here's another side view of everything. So at number 59, you have the aortic arch right here. So we're, right now we're looking um, from front to back uh, of the pig. So this way is to the head, this way is to the anus. So just to orient you guys, here are the lungs. Number 58 here, this is the mesentery. Sorry, not mesentery, the pulmonary artery right here. And so that returns uh, blood to the lungs. So while the pulmonary artery is dyed blue, uh, it is an artery, not a vein. So remember that veins are dyed uh, blue, arteries are dyed red, uh, generally, except for this one. So the pulmonary artery is carrying deoxygenated, deoxygenated blood uh, into the lungs. Um, where it's then oxygenated and then transported back to the heart. So once we've finished with the neck and thoracic uh, dissection, we can open up that abdominal cavity. And so to do this, uh, there's just a slight uh, cut right above the umbilical cord, um, cut straight up and then down on either side, uh, spreading open uh, that uh, abdominal cavity. So uh, other things you can see, um, you can see the liver, the gallbladder, stomach, spleen, pancreas, uh, the colon, uh, cecum, and rectum, as well as the small intestinal uh, structures like the duodenum, the jejunum, and then the mesentery. So, uh, first, <clears throat> so the circulatory system is how uh, our bodies travel or transport nutrients and then uh, oxygen uh, in, throughout our bodies, as well as transporting waste um, such as CO2 uh, out of our bodies. So blood travels from um, veins into our arteries through uh, our heart. So uh, returning blood uh, enters the uh, right atrium. Uh, through the superior uh, vena cava, which is right here, and you'll see it in the next uh, next slide. Uh, from there, um, from the right atrium, uh, blood travels through the right ventricle, uh, and then into the pulmonary artery, which is this arch right here, and then travels either down um, through through the uh, dorsal aorta which is right here this long vein from here it branches off um, into the umbilical uh, vein which travels up the umbilical cord as well as having others that travel to the liver uh, the pancreas um, and such blood can also flow uh, to the um, anterior side or the front where it branches off into the subclavians, which are these structures here and here. From there, uh, the blood flow supplies our arms and our uh, or the appendages with oxygen. These two veins right here and here are the carotids. They run parallel uh, to the esophagus, and those uh, supply our brain with uh, oxygen. In our pig dissections, you'll notice um, in the photos that these arteries are always uh, dyed red. Um, they have latex that have been pumped through, uh, so that way you can differentiate between arteries and veins. Veins are always dyed blue. Um, that way you can differentiate them uh, between uh, what's an artery, which is transporting blood, uh, hence why it's red, whereas veins uh, lack oxygen and um, are dyed blue instead. So 
So once blood's flown, uh, flowed throughout the body, uh, it returns to the lungs um, through uh, the pulmonary artery, and then enters uh, back into the heart through the left atrium. From there, it travels through the left ventricle, back into the aorta, into the rest of the body. So, uh, when uh, blood is coming back through the body, um, it needs to flow through veins. So, uh, if we take our anterior of our pig, blood flows to the brain uh, via the carotids and then flows back down uh, through these jugulars right here. You have the subclavian veins, uh, which return blood from the appendages right here and here. Um, right, And those all condense down into the anterior vena cava right here. That flows back into the heart. On the other side, you have um, these, uh, these veins flowing back into the dorsal aorta, or the posterior vena cava right here. It's not the dorsal aorta. So this posterior vena cava runs the length of the body and then returns uh, blood back to the heart there. So as an overview of the larger structures, you have the liver here, you have the large intestine right here, and then the small intestine uh, is this large structure through here. Here's the bladder. Uh, in between these two umbilical veins, there and there. You have the lungs here, the heart here. Um, you have the spleen, uh, it's the structure right here. In this slide, um, you can see uh, most of the excretory structures of this organism. So right here you have the kidney, it's this round structure um, right here. There's one on either side of the body. Uh, you have both a uh, renal artery and a renal vein, so veins are dyed blue right here. <clears throat> the artery is much harder to see because um, it is covered by this pin right here, but it's lo located right here. Number 16 uh, shows the spleen right here. Um, let's see. This structure right here, number 12, this is the stomach. This is where all digestion occurs. And then here at number 11 is the liver. Number 18 is pointing to the rectum of the organism. And so this is the end of the digestive tract um, right here. It goes all the way out into the anus. Look at this picture. Um, you can see the heart uh, right here. You can, have, you can see that coronary artery flowing right through here. Just below it, at number 35, you have the posterior vena cava, which is a vein that flows down the length of the body. Uh, or I guess it flows up the length of the body back to the heart, but it runs down the length of the body. You have the lungs on either side, here and here. Here's some of the diaphragm that's been left. Um, this is what pulls those lungs down uh, to draw air into the lungs and then relaxes to uh, collapse the lungs and let air uh, escape. Right here you have the liver. For part of the uh, digestive system, um, to orientate yourselves, uh, the lungs and the liver are up in this direction. So you, right now you're looking at the bottom side of the liver, and the anus and the tail are on this direction. So first we'll talk about the gallbladder right here. Um, it's that entire structure uh, just on the underside of the liver. And so this gallbladder uh, produces bile uh, and is connected to uh, the small intestine. Right here uh, at number 12, this is the bottom side of the stomach. Right here is where it connects to the small intestine. So you have the pyloric sphincter right here. This controls uh, how food travels uh, into the small intestine. 
right uh, behind this, or I guess posterior to this pyloric sphincter, you have the duodenum, and that's this entire structure from here to around here. From here uh, on, you have the small intestine, and then you have the large intestine, which you can very only very slightly see right in the, here. Number 53, this is the um, umbilical vein or artery. Uh, and so this is clipped during the dissection, which is why it's kind of uh, blurry and out of focus. It's because it's coming out towards the camera. Um, continuing on with the digestive tract, uh, you have the large intestine here. Um, right next to it, you have the jejunum. Uh, or the jujudo ileum right here. And so this is where the small intestine uh, right here connects to that large intestine here. Right behind it, you have the cecum. And the cecum is really just the first opening in this large intestine. Right here, you have the pancreas. You have the stomach. And then you have the spleen right here. Once uh, food travels through the large intestine and it passes through those series of uh, tubes, it uh, exits the body through the rectum right here, uh, number 18. Number 46 is the bladder right here in between these two umbilical veins right there and there. As for the excretory system, uh, there's the kidneys, the ureters, the uh, bladder. Um, so if you look at your pig dissection, you'll have a bladder uh, alongside that umbilical cord. It's in the middle um, right there. You have the umbilical arteries highlighted here in uh So when we're looking at a male, um, you'll have uh, these two testes. So one's been dissected right here, uh, number 49. From these testes, sperm flows up through the vas deferens, which is number 50, and then out to uh, the seminal vesicle, which is just on the underside of the bladder and in between those two umbilical veins. From there, X is out the urogenital papillae. If you look at the excretory system, uh, we have, um, or the female reproductive systems as well. We have mesentery, uh, number 57, uh, related to the digestive tract. This keeps all uh, of the small intestine uh, packed together. Now, when we jump into the Reproductive tract, we have the ovary, which is right here, that tube. Um, on the other hand, you have the oviduct. So you have the uter or the ovary here. From there, an egg will travel through the oviduct, which is this tube right here, uh, right to this point. This is the uterine horn. This is the beginning of the uterus. And so the uterus runs down the length of uh, the structure here. From there, uh, eggs are expelled through that female urogenital uh, papillae right here. You have the ure uh, urethra right here. It uh, runs right on top of the uterus right here.